Recently I started doing push-ups while walking my dog because he's always busy smelling things. I neither wanted to stand around like an idiot freezing my ass off, nor do I always want to drag him on, ruining his smell experience. So I started doing push-ups and wondered what happens if I do that every day. Will I become superhuman? Unfortunately, I always lost track of the count, so I didn't really have data. I thought of getting one of these, but then I remembered it's the 21st century and my phone is probably capable of counting numbers. I also wanted to see a graph to track my progress and so I decided to create my own app. Within an hour I added so many features on my to-do list that I found myself making a full-on fitness app. This video is about my progress, my mistakes and some tips on how to avoid them. If you have any question on how things work, just leave a comment and I'll try to make a detailed tutorial. I am Shackman and this is my channel, The Game Dev Shack. In here I teach game development and everything around it. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. Now on to the video. First I decided on a theme and I thought what is the reason I am doing all those push-ups? Do I want to live healthier? Am I trying to impress the ladies? Or maybe I am just trying to fill my empty meaningless life with anything? But the answer is much simpler. I need to prepare for the zombie apocalypse and so should you. The way things are going in the world the past few years, it seems to be around the corner. And when it happens, guess who gets eaten first? The slow and weak ones. And then they don't even have a good zombie life because they are still slow and weak so they can catch anyone and are hungry all the time. The zombie theme naturally made me think of video games and that's when it hit me what was missing in standard fitness apps. They are way too serious and real life and all that, forgetting the fact that life is a lot more fun if you make it a game. So I figured I should take more inspiration from games and that thought quickly spiraled out of control and before I knew it I was working on the most feature rich fitness app combined with an open world MMO. Taking a step back, I decided on the core features, creating exercises, counting repetitions and XP that makes you move up in levels as my first game element. And of course a safe system, if that doesn't work everything will be pretty useless. I created a class called exercise that contains the name and how many points each repetition gets. All exercises are stored in a list that sits in a class called save data and then goes everything I want to save, like a list of classes called sessions where each has a list of classes called sets which contains reference to the exercise and the number of repetitions done. All of these are simple classes, not modern behaviors, so to save everything I just serialize the save data class to a string with JSON. Then I save the string in the player perhaps and that's my save system. When loading the game I can just get the string from the player perhaps, then use JSON to turn that into a class and there I have my save data class with all the data I want. Next I wanted to make a grid to display all exercises with a button for each one so I could quickly click one and enter the number of repetitions I just did. I know I've just shown you a zombie getting beat up, but here comes something really disturbing so viewer discretion is advised. I used the grid layout component and yes it totally screwed me over later on like every single time I've used it. By the way the grid layout decides to change the layout of the button for me, you know just in case I've just spent ages carefully arranging images and text. Oh and by the way, in this case the undo button doesn't work, so don't use the grid layout group. Then I created a panel to create new exercises in the app. And I went a bit overboard with making sure I could also do that in the editor. Later on I realized that since the exercise class can be serialized, I can just have a list of exercises and enter the name and stuff in the inspector. No need to do that in the code. But of course what you're seeing here is basically sketching out things and sometimes you do really stupid things and you know, realize that later on. When I was doing the buttons I found myself going back and forth to an image editor and this was just the prototyping phase. So I decided to take a little detour and make things a bit more procedural. Now every button consists of several purely white images that can be adjusted in the editor. And to reuse it I made a scriptable object that can be used like a floppy disk. So when you have a color scheme that you like, you can make a new scriptable object, drag it into the slot and save it. 
and then you can use the scriptable object on another button and load it. Otherwise, you can always adjust things. Since everything is relative to the main color, you only have to change that. I will soon make a tutorial on that. I'm trying to advance it a bit more so that you can drag in a color palette and automatically get a bunch of fitting color schemes. And here you can see me using a grid layout group for the very last time in my life. Seriously, I think I'm getting this tattooed on my chest or somewhere. I did, of course, mess up the layout of my new buttons. So instead of using a grid layout, I used a bunch of objects with a horizontal group each and then put all of those in a vertical layout group, creating my own grid. The only thing I have to do is to make sure that the buttons get placed in the correct row, but that is pretty easy. I want four buttons in each row, so I just check via script in which row each button should go. For the counter, I wanted to use only buttons. I think it's a bit faster than entering the number with a keypad. And personally, I'm not that good at typing on a phone, so I often misclick the keypad. And this app is just for me, so I went with big fat buttons. Next, I wanted to have some info about the current session that's always on the front screen. It should show me the total score of the session, how long it's been running, and maybe some of the last sets I did. This might be extended to a scroll panel, so I can look through that quicker, but for now I just leave it at that. Just shows me like the last five exercises that I did. Finally, it was time to create my first build and start getting whipped. But there was a pretty annoying bug in Unity 2019.4, so I switched to my first 2020 version. Unfortunately, my UI did not survive the transition, and the UI is pretty much the entire game. Every single element was messed up. Luckily, it was just a draft at this point, and the excitement about Unity's new dark theme made up for it. it. Took me about an hour to rearrange all the UI elements, and on the very last panel I realized that the new Unity version hadn't saved my custom screen resolution, and that was probably the reason. When entering my phone's resolution, everything was messed up again, but in a different way. Since I had updated my scripts along the way, I couldn't just revert it with Git. After I sat in the corner crying for a bit, I decided to not bother with the layout for now, as things were going to change anyway. There are two lessons here. The first is that the only UI element that made the transition unharmed were my buttons because I turned them into prefabs. So next time I would simply drag the UI stuff in the assets folder to save them. The second is that even when you think you are designing for a specific resolution, it doesn't hurt to take the time and set some anchors for your UI elements. The first game-like feature I wanted was levels, so I added a manager that reads levels from a scriptable object. It's just a list of strings that the XP manager splits in words and floats. The first level of my fitness journey is a slimy fart, but with only 1000 push-ups I can call myself a piece of bread that's been soaked in dishwater. Continuing with soft, weak and generally disgusting things, I will soon find my way up to be as tough as a soft-boiled egg. I'm not sure yet how many levels there will be and I might adjust the points a bit. Having been raised by the internet, I know that the ultimate level will be, of course, Mr. Chuck Norris. For that, all I have to do is the equivalent of a million push-ups. Right below that is Mike Tyson in his prime and yes, he would have defeated Ali. Next is Super Mario, who is actually quite athletic, doing stuff like triple backflips followed by a kick to the head in mid-air. And that reminded me of another hero of mine, Donkey Kong, again very strong. I also wanted to implement something that motivates me to keep on track, so I was thinking of a daily decay of points if I don't reach a minimum. But looking at games, no one really does that, probably because it's frustrating. Games don't punish you for not playing, they reward you for playing with stuff like daily achievements. I don't really want to do that though, because when I reach a new level, I'd like to know that I really did the equivalent of, let's say, 10,000 push-ups and not just 6,000 with daily achievement boosts. For now, I will simply reward myself with things that I want. So, for example, my first reward is going to be one of those little steel cans you can use to make cappuccino. Right now, I'm drinking instant coffee and it's disgusting, but I'm addicted, so there's nothing I can do. Other possible rewards include some high quality bathing bombs by large cool art prints, weed, magic mushrooms, you know, the fun stuff. And maybe a big one later down the road like ordering a giant trampoline from China. So basically everything I want to buy that is not really necessary, I put on a list and then I have to earn it. I'm also thinking of combining this with my productivity app, but that's a bit too complex to explain here. 
As you've already seen in the beginning, I changed the layout as the other one was too messy. So I just painted this thing here based on a cool color palette I found. In the next weeks I will add some graphs to see my progress and whatever idea comes up when using the app. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions about things you've seen here, just leave a comment. Goodbye.